Welcome to Catch and Go. It's such a blessing to come to you and speak to you today. The things that God has been speaking to me over the last 12 years or so. I want to share with you some things and some events that are happening on the earth. And many of you have heard of the coronavirus. And so there are so many people concerned around the world. And I want to touch and give you an overall insight on the things that the Lord has spoken to me over the last 12 years or so. I want you to place close attention to what I'm saying and to the verse system which I'm going to give you. But I'm going to more speak to you and talk to you instead of preach to you or, or share the word of God. I just want to speak into your life, okay? And explain what you need to do uh, going forward. Now, I want to talk to you because the things that I'm going to share with you are either things that God over the last 12 to 14 to 20 years have either shown me through visions or dreams or by prayer or audibly or taking me into a deep sleep. Let me say this again. The things that I've been sharing on Catch and Go for the last 12 to 14 to 20 seasons are either by things that God has taken me into a vision or dreams or by prayer, my prayer during my prayer time or his audible voice or took me into a deep sleep. So I want to talk to you about what happened this week. This week, one of the things that happened, as you know, as I said before, one of the common things that we do in the upper room is that as we come into the upper room, we always go up and we touch the cross. And as I touched the cross, the Spirit of God said to me, the mark of the beast. I'm going to say that again. As I touched the cross, the Lord said to me, the mark of the beast. Then there's something that also happened to me during this week. And one of the things that happened was this time he didn't speak audibly, but he opened my eyes as a seer and as a prophet to the nations to see what he was showing me. And what I saw was like a city or an island, okay? And what I saw was that island was starting to sink or that city was starting to sink. And I remember many years ago that the Spirit of God said to me that many islands around the world will start to either disappear or sink and go rock bottom. And so since the last couple of years, you have seen many, many islands, many parts of the world where islands have sunk to the bottom. They have completely disappeared and islands are disappearing by a such such a pace that we need to understand the times that we're living in. So I want to turn our Bibles to one verse. And I want to talk to you from the things that the Lord has shared with me over the last 12 to 20 years or 14 to 20 years or so. But I want to go to this verse and just share this verse with you. And it's found in Luke chapter 18. That's Luke chapter 18. And verse number 8. Now Jesus is speaking. And these, this is Jesus declaring these words. He says, I tell you that he will avenge them speedily. Nevertheless, when the Son of Man comes, will he really find faith on the earth? And verse number 9, I want to touch that but perhaps later on on our telecast or another telecast. It says... Also, he spoke this parable to some who trusted in themselves. Circle that in verse number 9. Luke chapter 18, verse 89. But verse number 9, those who trusted in themselves that they were righteous and despised others. You need to underline all that. Now, back to, and we will go back to Luke chapter 18, verse 8 and 9. And as you heard me just uh, uh recite or read that passage or that verse or those verses you see that Jesus said will he find faith on the earth as you know that I have spoken from first Timothy chapter 4 that many will abandon their faith right and be led by what uh, teachings of demon doctrine and then of course I've talking about second Thessalonians 2 2 right the falling away but the thing is, will Jesus find faith 
on the earth when he returns. Well, let's take a moment. Since the coronavirus has broken out, today the world has, has gone into a chaotic, pandemonium, worried, concerned situation. Everybody's trying to get a hold of a mask. Everybody's trying to stock up. Everybody's trying to not only stock up, but everyone is making sure they have extra stock up because of the coronavirus. Because no one have literally really come out with a vaccine shot to cure, uh, cure people that have been confirmed with the coronavirus. As a matter of fact, those that have been treated for coronavirus actually happens that a week later or a few de days later, they go to get do a follow-up checkup only to be confirmed that they have the coronavirus again. So is there actually a vaccine shot? Many are saying that this is a new type of flu, but I have to I have to say that I don't I, I don't believe that and there's reasons why. Just because the coronavirus is has uh, so somewhat similar or exact things when you someone or a person gets the flu doesn't actually mean that coronavirus is a new type of flu. Because I said in my last telecast that there's many types of flu that is broken out in the measles and things like that. But the thing is that I believe that we are in for the greatest awakening and the greatest challenge that we face as people on this earth. Now, I want to talk to you about the things that the Lord has spoken to me over my years and my walk in the kingdom. I spoke to you on, on Catch and Go. I spoke to you things like the bride. The Lord began to speak to me concerning the bride. And you need to write this down. And um, it's better I give you the verses and then you write down. The Lord spoke to me in 208 about the bride, which when you look at the Lord, amen, and when you see the Father looking down at his church, the Spirit of God makes it very clear in his word. God makes it very clear in his words and Songs of Solomon. Write that down. Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. Why? Am I going to talk to you about the bride? Why do I bring you to Songs of Solomon chapter 2 verse 8 to 14? Because the Lord rejoices when he's looking from his throne. He looks down and he looks and cannot wait with such great hunger and yearning, longing to bring his bride to be with him forever. And he looks down and he marvels. And he's got an overall picture or a description of his perfect, beautiful bride. That is Songs of Solomon, chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. The Lord looks down and looks at the beautiful bride of his that she soon will come and take home forever. I want to also tell you that in 2008, the Lord spoke to me about gold. Why you need as a believer? Why not just as a believer, but every human being needs to begin to invest in gold. In 2008, when the Spirit of God began to bring these points to me, I went around different parts of the Pacific Islands. I went around different parts of Asia and Asian countries. I went different parts around the world and different nations talking to the church about biblical restoration and the new beginning and God, how God gets the church ready and is preparing the bride. He said to me that in one of these tele, uh, 208, he said, my people, I want you to go to the nations and tell my people that they need to invest in gold. I will explain the reason why in my next telecast I'm catching go. Then the Lord talked to me. The Lord spoke to me. Lakes will turn into blood. That's back in 208, Revelation 16. Write it down. 
lakes will turn into blood, okay? That's Revelation 16. And 208, the Lord spoke to me about volcanoes where it rock. Volcanoes have erupted the last couple of weeks, last couple of months. And so 208, there's more active volcanoes than ever before. And matter of fact, in 208, I remember that's the time when the Lord also spoke to me that John Key, John Key will become the new prime minister of New Zealand. And sure enough, right before I took off or I had already left and landed back in the U.S., sure enough, I got a report that John Key became New Zealand's new prime minister. I want to talk to you about what he also spoke to me concerning the Euphrates River. You need to pay close attention to the Euphrates River. When the Bible gives a ver an overall description or explains overall very clear that when the Euphrates River is dry, we are close to the end time. We are actually not only in the last days, when you see the Euphrates River dry, but I actually have articles going back to 208 that I will show you on my next telecast that I have saved. And I have said that in these articles that were printed, I said that before they were printed out and came out in uh, newspapers and in articles and in places in different parts of the world, before that came out and before there were pictures and they show pictures about the Euphrates River Drive, I went on to say around the world and around the nations that the Spirit of God spoke to me that the Euphrates River will dry up and be dry. I also want to talk to you about the Euphrates River. You write this down. Just as I said to you, the lakes will turn into blood, Revelation 16. Euphrates River dries is also Revelation 16. God also spoke to me in 2008 that the islands will disappear. And this week, as I was caught in this vision, I was caught in this thing. The Spirit of God showed me islands starting to disappear and starting to sink. I saw them sinking. I need to let you know that I'm not trying to, to uh, scare you. But this should be no surprise. We are in our very last days or moments and seconds away from being caught up in the air, as they call it, rapture time. The Lord in 2008 spoke to me that there will be many earthquakes. The Spirit of God said many floods, mudslides. All these things God has been speaking to me for over 12 to 14 to 20 years now. I want to talk to you also that in 2008, besides God telling me to go around and tell the bride, his bride, to get ready, which I just told you, Songs of Solomon, okay? Chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. The also, in 2008, the Lord spoke to me that the churches around the nations need to go back to having foot wash services. Having a foot washing service. This was in 2008. Today, many churches don't have foot washing service. Practically, there is non-existing services being held around the world in churches that are doing foot washing service. And in, when it comes to go and tell his bride to prepare the bride, he said that you need to start to break bread at home. I explained that in many of my telecasts on Catching God. You need to start to break bread at home and take communion at home with your wife, with your children, and with your loved ones, with your family, period. You need to take communion at home. Now, I also, in 2008, the Lord spoke to me about three unclean frogs, Revelation 16. I said that in 2008 and even this week, I said as I touched the cross, the Spirit of God said to me, the mark of the beach, Revelation 13. I also, in my last couple of telecasts, I've spoken from Genesis 41, amen, 
the times of Pharaoh and the times of a sickness ring. God putting the sickness ring on the church, symbolizing power and authority. So, sickness ring is found in Genesis 41. Pharaoh is Genesis 41. But I also want to talk to you today, okay, and the next few telecasts about the next flu that's coming out. Coronavirus is just something that came out. And people will say, and people will try to blame certain countries or certain nations or things like that. And they played a part in that for this coronavirus breaking out. But before the coronavirus broke out, and you go back and watch my telecast on Catch and Go a week before that, I said that the wrath of God, God has intensified his wrath, and the wrath of God was coming, and it was coming very quickly. Sure enough, a week later, coronavirus broke out. I want to talk to you about that. I also want to talk to you that as I open up this telecast, I said that, that many times over the years, God has spoken to me through either a vision or dreams or through my prayer time or by audibly, his audible voice, or has taken me into a deep sleep. And so I want you to know that in 2008, in 2009, 10, 11, and 12, and so forward, going all the way to 215 and 216, the Lord kept showing me different levels of different mosquitoes or different bugs. Remember I said that there's deadly a deadly bug that's coming. And I said there may be a fourth bug, a fifth bug, a sixth bug. Okay? This is not the flu bug. I said that this bug will literally suck away your flesh, suck you away, and you instantly die. I can tell you this, that what I am speaking to you, I got many people around the world. Even in South Africa, even in the South Pacific Island, even in Asia, throughout nations in Asia, in the South Pacific Island, and throughout Cape Town, and many places in New Zealand, and throughout the world, that people will say those things he actually spoke, even in American Samoa, in Samoa, in Fiji, amen. In all of these places, I spoke these things all the way back to 2008. I want you to know that the Spirit of God is wanting me to get you to be prepared because pandemonium is just begun. But it's only the tip of the iceberg of what I said. And if you go on Catch and Go and you subscribe to my YouTube channel, you can go out on and see there is a, a telecast on Catch and Go that I talk that I believe. I believe. I didn't say God spoke to me. I said, I believe that there are nine plagues. And I want to make this clear. I did say that God showed me, amen, that, that the nine plagues, and I was referring to the time of Pharaoh and the time of Egypt, and I did speak that on that telecast. So I want to make that clear. I believe there are going to be nine different plagues. And I want to say to you, coronavirus is not one of them. The flu that is coming, that will break out, that literally the World Health Organization cannot find a vaccine shot or confirm something to cure the coronavirus. Because after they've been, uh, they've been cleared uh, from the coronavirus, a week later, a few days later, they go for a regular checkup only to be again confirmed that they've been diagnosed or they've been, uh, they've been uh, confirmed to have coronavirus again. Now listen to me. This deadly flu, I have articles. I like to prove people that I have articles going back to 12 years. I have people that are texting me, people that are WhatsApping me from nations that I have spoken these things, and they say, Prophet, do, pl pl plumb line, do you remember you spoke these things in 208? Do you remember you spoke these things in 210? Do you remember you spoke these things in 209, 210, 211, 212? They are actually sending me videos, people that have come to my meetings around the world, in the Pacific Islands, in Asia. I have spoken these things before these events did happen. And those events that are still 
are going to take place. Now, I talked about in 2008 that the Lord spoke to me about vultures. The Lord spoke to me about a global collapse. The Lord talked to me about a cashless society. All this you all know, so it should not be a surprise to you, but Luke 18, verse 8 and 9, Jesus declares, Will I find faith? Are believers today holding on to their faith? Well, that's a question mark because many churches are closing. Many believers are not going to church. Many evangelicals are closing down or many pastors are quitting the ministry. But I get concerned with preachers and I get concerned with men of God talking about they're going to teach you how to be protect yourself from these viruses. And uh, I get worried when you are telling people that uh, no virus is able to touch you. I want to make this very clear. In South Korea, there was a church, okay? In Singapore, there was a church, okay? And members of their church got, found out that members of their church were confirmed to have the coronavirus. Now, I'm not pointing these nations out or these countries. I'm just saying, let's be careful what we say. Now, I want to continue with some of the things also. In these things, the Lord said to me that the earth was on its last breath. That you will see the earth and you will see many more sinkholes, many more volcanoes, and major earthquake throughout the world. I also want to talk to you, perhaps on my next telecast on Catch and Go, or the one after that, I want to talk to you about the famine, a famine coming of the hearing of the word of God. Then I also want to take you back and talk to you about 2 Kings chapter 9, verse 1 to 37, the dream that God gave me on September 11, 2013. I also said that in 2019, one morning I woke up and I went to the bathroom to freshen up and to do like any other human, uh, other, any other person would do, like wash my face, brush my teeth. And as I'm washing my face, the Spirit of God, audible voice, the Lord said to me, Papacy, and he said, Statue of Liberty. Now, Papacy, it speaks in reference to what? Rome and the Roman Empire. The Statue of Liberty, of course, we know that it's located in where? In the U.S., right? In New York, right? But I've also said that U.S. is not Babylon, okay? Now, I said that this week the Lord spoke to me about what? The mark of the beast and islands are starting to sink and islands are starting to disappear, there are many things I want to talk to you on my next telecast. I am just giving you a little bit about the things I want to talk to you today about. Remember one bride, what verse? Songs of Solomon's chapter 2, verse 8 to 14. I will talk to you about why you need to invest in gold, why you need to go speak to your banker, why you need to go speak to your attorney or your lawyer or your personal lawyer. I will explain that in the coming telecast on Catch and Go. And I also will explain why the Lord said to me that the lakes would turn into blood, Revelation 16. The Euphrates rivers, as I said, I will show you evidence and I will show you proof from articles that I've put away long time ago that before I, before those articles were printed out or they came out into these newspapers, it, I, the Lord spoke to me that the Euphrates will dry up, it's, the river will dry up. Remember also that the Lord spoke to me about volcanoes. Euphrates River speaks in Revelation 16. Okay. The three unclean frogs, also Revelation 16. God spoke to me from Matthew 24. Okay. Earthquake and pestilence and plagues and bloods and mudslides and all these kind of things. I will speak to you concerning these things. 
So I want you to pay close attention on my telecast on Catch and Go. Remember, remember this. Will Jesus, Luke 18, verse 89, find faith on the earth? I have an answer for you when we come back on our next telecast from Luke 18, verse 89. Lord bless you.